<laughs> so how's it coming so far? Um, first two days in helmets. Um, guys competed better today. I think the, the temperature dropping helped a little bit. Tuesday, a little hot, and, and there's just nothing you can do to, to prepare for just the football tempo. So we kind of challenged our guys today. I thought they responded better. And, and you know, these practices are, I almost feel like they're kind of like a dress rehearsal for when you put the shoulder pads on on Saturday. So you know, everybody kind of has a vague sense of what to do. And now we'll see, you know, who enjoys uh, running it up. Hey, do you, do you get a sense that like it's the bigger guys maybe want to get past all this stuff and get into that hitting phase? As opposed to <laughs> you hope. We'll find out. Uh, some of them, yeah, some of them, no. It, it's hard. You know, I mean, it's hard to kind of be a big guy and line play at sort of you know half speed but 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 that's where they can at least be assignment sound they can be hand placement sound you know footwork sound uh that type of thing learn learn the fundamentals of drill work that type of deal so um so that they can have some confidence that you know it you know it's just not you know chaos on saturday what what, what kind of confidence speak of confidence what kind of confidence do you have in replacing some of these guys that, that left earlier that graduated you know especially up front well, that's what why, you see out here. right? But that's why you get recruited to come to the University of Miami, right? And, and, and in any big time program, you're going to have guys leave, and, and you recruit guys to want to take those guys' place. So, um, I think the guys that we have on our line, they're excited. I think they kind of sense the challenge. Um, but I, I look at it as the exact same boat uh, situation we were in this time two years ago, mm -hmm. when nobody really knew anybody we had on our defensive line, and they were all sort of sophomores to be and unknown quantities and. And we played a little bit of our chip over our shoulder in 2016 and trying to play pretty good. So, I, you know, if it's happened before, I know it can happen again. Having the linebackers that you have that do have a lot of experience, even though they are young as well, how much does that help to bring along the guys you play? Well, it's, it's really big because they, they can help them in terms of pre-snap, getting aligned, what plays to expect, that type of stuff. So they, they, they're, they have gone from being the young guys in the defense to now being the elder statesmen, and uh, we'll expect a lot from them because of that linebacker group, you still have some depth too, like Wayman Steed. I'm sure the guy. What, what are you seeing in Steed and some of the other younger linebackers? Wayman's been impressive. He um, he has the the instinct um, to make quick decisions. A linebacker, um, I guess it gives us a dynamic more somewhere to pick me, which we really, other than Mike, didn't really have uh, on our roster. And um, and Brad, Bradley Jennings as well. I mean, those, those two guys right now. Um, you know, they still make some young, inexperienced mistakes, but in terms of linebacker instinct and linebacker play, both those guys are pretty advanced um, given their overall level of, of experience. And does it create that competition with the, the elder statesman, the, the uh, top three juniors yet? Well, it should because, you know, sort of linebacker plays linebacker play. And, they, you know, and so a guy that understands how to stay square and take on blocks well and shed blocks and fill gaps and make plays, there's a, there's a natural respect in the room that comes from that. So I think even our older guys can see the younger guys that are, can do the, some of those things, and, and, and that helps them, you know what I mean? And, and, and they, they can learn uh, from Shaq and Mike and, and continue to, and, and Mike Smith as well, and continue to improve because of that. Wilder looks a little bit bigger. Uh, what, have, what have you seen from him so far here? Well, we've got him kicked out playing a bit more in space, you know what I mean? And, and um, really trying to see what he can do, you know, and, and he's challenging wide receivers out there. And, I'll, I'll be excited to see what he does Saturday when, when we get to hit. Is that position, you know, obviously you get a couple safeties moved down there. Is that position fundamentally different or is it just kind of the same stuff you've been doing but you're training them, you know, separately? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. You know, there, there's, there's some differences in terms of um, the athlete that we put at that position. And, 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 and you're, you're trying to make yourself multiple for the different styles of offense that you have to play against in the fall. Um, but there's no doubt that we're trying to increase the amount of uh, reaction time we have at that position out there and, and some of the flexibility and what, what we can do coverage-wise with some of those guys. How about the young DBs? The young DBs have, have, have been impressive. And again, we're just you know playing tag, but uh, Gervin Hall made a play out here on, on Tuesday that had both sides of the ball sort of ooing and aahing, uh, just showing his range from a safety position. Um, DJ Ivy is DJ Ivy and Gilbert Frierson both. I mean, they're so long, they're so strong. Um, what our strength staff has done with those guys since they've come on campus and just the way their bodies have transformed since they've been here is, is impressive. They get hands on you, it's hard to get off those guys. And then they got length so they can cover you up down the field. But my favorite part about those guys is that they're just eager to learn. You know, DJ's a guy that is gonna try to do everything exactly the way it's coached. Um, and so those guys are coming in and really buying into exactly what Coach Trump is telling those guys out there. So. Now it'll start to speed up, and they'll they'll 
sometimes go through the normal curve. Well, the more they know, the worse they get. Uh, but but just in terms of taking them out of the package right now, we're really excited with both those guys. Yeah, I mean, the biggest difference here, year three in spring football, just in spring football, is there a major, you see a major difference, obviously, from when you guys got here? Well, what I see is just the, the different chapters of the program. You know, year one was just who are we? Let's establish an identity, both sides of the ball. Um, year two was like, okay, we, we accomplished some things. You know what I mean? Started to get some things turned. Um, but now let's take the next step. Uh, which we did. We beat Florida State. We, we finally won the Coastal. Um, now this spring, you know, the way that last year ended really sets a tone for all of our offseason workouts. Okay, now we've seen what playing at a championship level is like. Okay, what does it take to succeed at that level? How, how do we, if we, when we go back there, how will we be better prepared? Um, because you got to see it to really know uh, what it is that you're fighting and what you're battling. Right? Our guys have seen it now. Um, so the way we work out, the way we, we go through our, our, our agility drills, the way we practice, I think there's a different tone set now because now they know now they know really what they're... That doesn't mean that the other goals are assumed, right? But it just means that now they've they've seen what it takes to, to get to a different level of, of, uh, of college football. You sense it already? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, and, 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 and now because they've seen it as coaches, we can put it in their face every day. You know, it's hard to talk about winning all those things if you haven't uh, ever won your division. You know, so now they understand what it what it takes to win a division. That's no easy thing. Um, okay, now you get to Charlotte. How do you win in Charlotte? Now you get to New, Year, New Year's Day Six Bowl. How do you win there? And what they found is that the margins are, are slim, and, uh, and they're not as far away. But but those little things are the huge things that separate those two types of teams. Maybe the answer to this is consistency and doing it every day. But with Garvin, uh, what does he have to show you? I think you. But again, what you see. In the Understanding the consistency of being a down after down guy, you know, and especially at a position like defensive line where, you know, we've said if you get one sack a game, you can be all conference or all American, but you can still be playing poorly the other way. Uh, very similar to what Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson elevated his game from year one to year two. The stats sometimes don't always show it. Um, so it's understanding of being a more consistent guy, being, being uh, firm at the point of attack. And, and he was in the Wisconsin game. Garvin's in there and he's strong and, uh, against their power running offense. So, But it's just the idea of, of you can't be that guy that plays good every now and then. Okay, Now you got to be a guy that every week, week in, week out, you're playing at a high level. Thank you, right, thank you all so much.